Hey, what is going on you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven, and today I have a PS4 controller that's branded an Elite controller, so it has paddles, uh, four of them, remappable capabilities, a wheel D-pad, trigger locks, and a slew of other features. Pretty inexpensive, I picked it up for $55 on Amazon, and it actually rocks. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, my internet friends, we are over here at the Stormtrooper desktop as always. This is where we do our unboxings if you're new to the channel. If you are new and you like tech reviews, custom controller builds, PC builds, gaming news, gaming vlogs, uh, anything around the video game industry and community, you should probably subscribe. Anyway, uh, this is the Letton. I've never heard of this brand before, but like many of the generic, uh, you know, Chinese knockoff controllers that you can buy on Wish, Alibaba, stuff like that, uh, that get ported over to Amazon eventually from third-party sellers. Uh, I, I didn't really know what to expect because a lot of times you get these and they're just huge chunks of craps. I review them and I send them right back to Amazon quicker than they came into the house. But honestly, this one is not like that at all. Um, I'll have a link in the description below to two other videos of controllers very similar to this around the 50 to $60 price point that have paddles, trigger locks, you know, premium controllers for the PS4. And uh, this definitely takes the cake. So I've already played with this for a few days, probably got about 12 to 16 hours behind the sticks. I did put it back in its original box so you guys could get the uh, original unboxing experience. So we'll just break into that now. The box is actually a lot higher quality than any of those other cheap Chinese knockoffs, which usually come in just a plain white box with some, you know, unlegible Egyptian hieroglyphics on the background or something like this. Has a list of the features, lets you know it is wireless, blah, 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 blah. So, sliding it open, you have a four-foot non-braided, actually that's probably about a three-footer, it's very, very short. It's actually shorter than what comes with the standard PS4 controller, which is already really short, uh, because they don't expect you to lay in bed and, you know, play with this while you're charging. This is just for pairing the controller initially and then giving it a charge and probably using a different controller. Uh, so nothing really special here, USB... Uh, I almost said USB-C, micro USB. Uh, and then you have your controller in here. No laser cut foam or anything like that. It's not like a, a, a Razer or a Microsoft Elite or a Scuff, Aim, Battle Beaver, any of those. It's just a, you know, cheap generic controller, but it doesn't perform like that. And that's what we're gonna get into. So you got your plastic packaging here. Controllers are right there. Comes with no analog sticks installed, but you have this accessory pack which is really nice. It's in a uh, white foam here, and then it has a little plastic seal around it to make sure it doesn't get dirty in transit or anything. Popping that open, you do have your four paddles. Holy crap, this thing is tight. That is what he said. Oh, golly. Holy bejesus, they just don't want you to play. There we go. So the trick to getting this out is you have to open both sides and then kind of figure it out, I guess you could say. So you have your wheel D-pad, which I immediately am going to swap on there because I'm a huge fan of the wheel D-pad. If you're ever playing fighting games and you want to be able to do roll-on combos and stuff, not to mention, I think cosmetically, these wheel D-pads, it is magnetized, obviously. Uh, they just give the controller a nice premium look, in my opinion. Just my opinion. Don't crucify me in the comment section below. Uh, you could play like that, but it's extremely uncomfortable. What you're supposed to do is take your analog sticks here. They only give you two caps, which is unfortunate because, um, you know, these magnetized thumbsticks were originated on the Xbox Series 1 Elite and then on the Series 2, and they come with six different um, D-pad cap or um, analog stick caps, so a total of three sets. You have domed, uh, concaved low, and concaved high, I believe. So I'm not a huge fan of the only pair of stock sticks. They are stock Microsoft um, Xbox One sticks. So they are, if you played with an Xbox One, you've used these sticks before. They are concaved. They don't have a lot of grip in the middle. They're very slick. And then they have kind of a hard plastic ribbed material on the outside. They're playable for sure. Um, I luckily do have uh, the complete Elite kit back there. And I will have a link in the description below, not only to this controller, but also for I think it's 10 bucks or 15 bucks on Amazon, there's uh, a set of like six to eight different thumbsticks that you can get these magnetized ones. Um, so you can just pop them on. 
uh, mix and mash, do whatever you want to do. So build quality actually feels really good. I'm trying to twist it right now. I don't hear any creaks or moans and groans. The plastic is a soft touch rubberized material, uh, which is really nice. It's still plastic, but it's, it's a better feeling plastic than like the stock hard slick plastic that you get on a standard controller. Uh, good weight on the thumbstick, seem like they snap back to neutral really well. Um, didn't experience any stick drift or anything, but again, I've only had it for three days. Uh, really cool X pattern there for the speaker ports. Doesn't make it sound any better, it just looks kind of cool. I think the touch the uh, touchpad also looks really cool. It's got these lines in it, and then like a, a piano black fingerprint magnet up top there. Uh, love the D-pad, the only thing I will say, it's a little bit loose. The uh, magnet in there holds it in place, it's not going to pop off or anything, but uh, you, you do have to use a good amount of force for it to register that you're, you know, to actuate the button that you're hitting the D-pad, um, which I'm not a huge fan of. It didn't seem to do it with the cross, but when you put the wheel on there, the circle, you do have to kind of give it a little bit more finger muscle in order for it to register. Face buttons feel good, they're a little bit more clicky and tactile than a standard PS4 controller, so that's a plus. I mean, this is... 60 bucks for something that has paddles, trigger stops, and the fact that the face buttons are better than a licensed Sony controller, that's good. They also have a neat little design on the face buttons there. I'm not a huge fan of it. I have seen better designs that I like, uh, but all in all, I like this matte black finish with the brushed aluminum, brushed aluminum on top. Obviously, it's not real aluminum. It's just painted as such. Um, very nice. Triggers have a nice little um, dovetail wing on them, which feels really good. Um, which brings me to the triggers and bumpers. The triggers do feel phenomenal. The trigger lock system only locks out about, I would say, 25 to 30 percent of the pull, so not the most um, aggressive trigger locks where you're just getting a very tiny pull, which I personally prefer, uh, but it does lock out about 20 to 30 percent of the pull, and that will help you in your shooting games. Obviously, for racing games, you'll deactivate it. And the triggers have a good linear pull, nice resistance, um, they feel good. They feel better than standard PS4 controller or uh, triggers. And dare I say, I think they feel better than Xbox One controller triggers too. And I, I love Xbox One controller triggers. I do for for a stock controller, obviously. Uh, bumpers feel a little cheap and chintzy. They're very clicky and they have kind of a hollow tinny sound to them. Uh, but they do register really well. They're ergonomically in a good position. I've had no issues gaming with them. Um, the options and share buttons. My biggest complaint on the standard PS4 Sony controller is that they're sunken into the shell so far that you kind of have to almost use a fingernail or just get your finger just right to actuate them. These ones are raised up out of the shell, so they're much, much easier to hit, very clicky. Uh, the home button is a little bit squishy, you know, kind of like a membrane keyboard or something, but hey, it works, man, it works. Uh, now moving on to, we already went over the trigger locks, they're labeled with, you know, what position they are, but once you've used them a couple times, you know that clicking them inwards uh, is a full pull, and then when you, you know, are gaming and you're like, oh shoot, I picked up a semi-auto weapon, let's pop the trigger lock on the right stick or whatever, or right trigger, you can do that. Uh, paddles, let's go ahead and install those now because I know that is a huge um, selling point and also a key feature that you guys are interested in with these controllers. Uh, well, just looking on the bottom here, you do have your standard accessory port and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So these are magnetized, they just slip in like that. I believe that one actually goes up there. No, maybe over here. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together, guys. Okay, I think we got it. I think we're cooking with that bacon grease. There we go. I was like, it's not actuating. Well, that's because you didn't put it in there right, dummy. There we go. Now we're cooking. So by default, these are X, circle, square, and triangle, but they are remappable. We'll go over that in just a hot moment. Um, all in all, they feel pretty good, but my biggest complaint with them, just like with the original um, Xbox Elite controller that had virtually the same paddles, and they, they, they are like from the parts bin, these are the same paddles. Um, they stick off of the shell really far. That gap in there is unnecessary. It actually makes them to where they're a little bit of a stretch to hit. They're not in a very ergonomically correct position and also they can get accidentally actuated because you know your hands are just resting here chilling and doesn't require a lot of pressure at all to hit these so you can easily um, accidentally hit them which kind of sucks. Um, what I would do personally, I make custom controllers, I have a small business doing this, I have a, a picture on screen. 
pictures on screen here. I'm sorry, I've not been getting much sleep at all. I've, I'm going through a, a lot, haven't slept much. Back to the video. Um, yeah, so I, what I would do is I would bend these uh, outwards, and they're not going to bend just by hand. You probably have to take two pliers, clamp them, and maybe even heat them up with a heat gun where they get a little more pliable. And I would bend them out more to where they're more flush with the shell. So that's what I would do. If I do end up keeping this controller, that'll be one of the modifications that I make. I leave nothing stock. Um, I love these little fingerprint indents here. They don't really do much when you have the paddles there, but when you're playing paddleless, just by popping these out, um, it, they're in a great position and it feels super good. It like locks your hand into place. Not that you're really, you know, whipping the controller around and yeah. But anyway, nice grip there. Uh, with the paddles, it doesn't do much for you, but it is what it is. If you want to disassemble this, you have six Phillips head screws on the back here. Uh, they are the same size as the Phillips heads for a Sony PS4 controller. Um, we will actually do a disassembly video on this, probably because I'm going to do a controller build on this. That's one of the main things I do on this channel is custom controller builds. We do budget builds. We do full-on decked out builds with hydro dipping, uh, soldering paddles, basically uh, replacing the thumbstick modules for increased tension, all kinds of stuff. So if that interests you, subscribe, like, tell your mom, tell your grandma, all that stuff. Uh, I like the touch bar. It's a little Batman ear looking thing. I think that's actually really cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty dim because I keep my PS4 settings dim because it saves battery and also um, in a dark, dark room the light bar actually can be a little distracting. It's not like, you know, crazy or anything, but it is what it is. Let's get a little bit more light on the old face. But yeah, overall, I mean, this impressed the hell out of me. I am not usually impressed by um, these kind of generic third-party cheap controllers. Um, and this actually blew me away. Um, out of all the ones I've tested, this by far is the best. And one of the reasons is because you can remap the paddles. On the other ones I tested, one of them was remappable. Uh, and it was very easy to remap, but it did have some other issues. Build, build quality wasn't great. The face buttons were really close together. Uh, you could easily hit all four buttons with your thumb, which you can do on any controller pretty much if you do it right. But yeah, this is a great controller, honestly. Like, uh, it, it's impressive. Uh, they did a good job. So I'm going to show you guys how to remount the paddles, then we'll get a little gameplay, and then I'll give you guys my, uh, my wrap-up. Alright, so to remount the paddles on the fly without having to plug into PC or anything like that, because there is no software suite for this, so remapping, the only way to do it is from the controller. Um, yeah, like I said, the instructions aren't too great. So you're going to hold down the share button, as well as whichever paddle you want to remap. So we'll do uh, this bad boy here. Then your light bar is going to do a crazy uh, little flicker action here. Oh, kill the light. Strobing out. So I'm going to press uh, the face button I want, which is going to be X. Oh, it stopped its uh, pairing process. you got to be kind of quick about it. So enter again. Flickering. So I want X. And then press the paddle. Go solid. And you are now set doesn't work all the time, which is kind of weird. Um, it's very finicky. You have to uh, do it quickly, and sometimes you have to do it multiple times. But hey, once you're set, you're set. Uh, another interesting thing is you can actually set macros, which I thought was pretty crazy because that's, that's usually a uh, feature that you get on some very premium controllers, like Razer, for example, has set, set up uh, set upable, set upable? <laughs> programmable macros on there. Uh, macros, for those of you who don't, don't know, from the PC gaming world, generally gaming mice and mechanical keyboards, you can set up some kind of macro to where by pressing one button, it executes a series of button presses or whatever. So, you know, if you're doing Fortnite, instead of having to tap a whole bunch of shit to build, you could literally, it's kind of like cheating, but a little bit less or so, just press one button and it would, you, you know, you could jump, spin around, lay down, you know, all all the building buttons up here and bam, basically you have yourself a three-story house. So, pretty sweet. I'll show you guys how to do that now too. It's the exact same process except you're going to hold the options button and then uh, one of the paddles. And it has to be mapped to one of the paddles. So the macro can't be like set to one of the face buttons or anything like that. These are not remappable, just the paddles obviously. So, 
If you want to set up a macro, you will hold down options and function. So I actually wasn't able to ever get the macros set up, which isn't a huge deal because I probably wouldn't use them anyway. I don't even really use them on my gaming PC. I think maybe one or two games I might use macros, but they're, 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 they're just not really my thing. Um, but I was not able to set up the macros. I followed the instructions to a T. You're supposed to hold down the options button and the paddle that you want map to and then press a series of buttons and then press the option button and the paddle again and that will stop the macro sequence so you could press like triangle square square x circle circle l1 and basically that would be your macro but um i was unable to get them set up which is kind of stupid but uh overall pretty good controller if you don't need the macros i mean the controller is like 50 bucks holy shit there's a fly like right in my face what the fuck um God, he is just pestering the shit out of me. Anyway, good controller for the price. Uh, definitely recommend it for the price. Obviously, if you can spend 100 to 150, there's much, much better controllers out there. If you're on PlayStation, I would say get a Razer Raiju or the Nacon Revolution or the Scuff Vantage 2. Um, Jesus fucking Christ. And if you're on Xbox, I would say, well, if they didn't have quality control issues, get an Elite 2. But since they do, I'd say get a Razer Wolverine Ultimate uh, or a uh, maybe a Scuff or something like that. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Peace.